Okay. <gasps> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mara, if you don't know me already. In honor of being in the midst of wedding season, I wanted to talk a little bit about my wedding experience, how much we spend on our wedding. I'm also gonna include some tips of advice and recommendations for things to take into account when you're planning for your wedding, and especially if you have a low budget. I got married back in June. I guess it's still June, so June 1st. I just got back from my honeymoon, and now Alec and I are just settling into our new home, or I guess I've been living here since March, but he moved in with me after we got married. I hope that if you are a bride or a future bride, that something in this video can help you and maybe inspire you. Okay, let's get started. Probably only my friends that are watching this, if my friends do watch this video, <laughs> know that I actually bought my wedding dress before Alec proposed to me. I mean, that sounds kind of weird at first, but it was right before he proposed and it was just a matter of time before he actually was going to do it. And so I was on Beholden.com, which is Anthropology's wedding line or wedding website. And I found the most beautiful dress. Not only was it beautiful and had the details that I was looking for, but it also had a really good price tag on it. So I basically ordered this dress online, not knowing for sure if it was going to be my for sure dress. Um, when I got it, it just fit me. I still have to get it altered, but I was like, this is amazing. This is exactly what I'm going for. <laughs> and I was like, Lord, if something happens or if we end up not getting married, this will be extremely tragic. So, um, I trust that you have me. Um, so I kept the dress and it was only $200 after the discount. And then with tax, it was about $240. So it was an extremely affordable option and I loved it like with all my heart. I went to this lady who um, I got a recommendation from a friend and she actually altered it exactly how I wanted it to be as a two piece dress instead of just, you know, a regular dress. I made it a two piece. So it was like a top and a skirt. And I, oh my gosh, I just dream about it. Still. And it, I, I'm so happy with that decision. The alterations, it ended up being $285. The next expense that we incurred for our wedding was photography. And this is gonna actually bring me to my first tip of advice. If you are looking to have a budget-friendly wedding, I think the first most important thing to think about is what you're gonna prioritize with your wedding. The number one thing that we prioritized was our photography. And I really didn't even know how much photography average out to be. We thought it would be maybe 1200, 1500 at most. We ended up spending $2,500 on engagements and wedding. And to be honest, our photographer is just amazing. He truly is so talented. Shout out to you, TJ, you're awesome. So we definitely didn't expect to spend $2,500 and whether or not that was the average or you know, if that was expected, was definitely worth it working with TJ. Any of the vendors that you're gonna be using, find people that you truly believe in and that you can get to know on a more personal level because that just makes the experience so much more worth it, especially when you're looking at these large numbers that you're spending. I'm gonna next go on to flowers and decorations and I'll do this because decorations and really the aesthetic of the wedding was also a priority for me. And I found that with our budget, I ended up realizing I couldn't have it all. Initially, I wanted to have all fruit wood tables with all wooden chairs and just everything looking extremely like, I don't know, maybe the weddings you see on Pinterest. Those are really expensive. And honestly, I stressed out for no reason. I stressed out for the aesthetic of the wedding, which was so stupid looking back. But you know, obviously, I love interior decorating. I love styling. The total cost for flowers and the additional greenery, eucalyptus, and all of that that I bought online from a wholesaler was $293. And then things that I bought myself from Amazon. I got cheesecloth table runners for the tables, some letter boards to plates, and cutlery and the champagne flutes, the string lights that I strung across the dance floor, or not that I strung, I didn't string them, <laughs> our friends strung, and the pompous grass that was inside of the little um, bud vases, and then also the black candles for the candlesticks. All of that came out to be $685, and again, this was one of my biggest priorities. It was making sure that it was exactly what I wanted to look like, and it was, it was amazing. <laughs> Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about is the alcohol. So alcohol can be a huge cost for most weddings. For us, it was not the biggest cost because we chose to go with a beer and wine bar. I guess this is going to also tie into our venue because while we were looking around for venues, we, you know, we're weighing out our options. I also know that if a venue was 
labeled as a wedding venue, then it would be way, way out of our price range. So we were between a field wedding, a backyard wedding, something outside where there was just nature around us. And we ended up going with a field wedding and it was at a brewery owned by a couple of friends in Seguin, Texas. And it was absolutely perfect. We were so blessed by this offer and they're just amazing people to work with and just to be around. And also their kids are adorable. And we worked something out to where it fit our price range. So of course it was at a brewery, so we were gonna have quite a few beer options. We had four different beer options and we also ordered champagne through them and it was a special raspberry champagne that we got from a winery down the road that um, Brian, the owner, is also friends with. And so the beer and the champagne came out to be $485. Oh, I didn't mention. So our wedding included 120 guests and all of this was meant to feed 120 guests. So our friends pretty much came up with that number and made sure that it fit in our price range. So aside from the beer and the champagne, we also bought on our own just some Trader Joe's two buck chuck wine, and we definitely got too much. I didn't think about this, but obviously we're at a brewery, and if there's specialty beer, the majority of people are probably gonna drink the beer. Not only was there beer, but there was sangria. I think there was root beer. Alec and I went to Trader Joe's and we bought 24 bottles of wine, 12 white, 12 red, and that came out to be about 60 bucks, which was fine. It was, that really wasn't much at all, but at the end of the wedding, we brought home the rest of the wine, and I'm pretty sure we came home with We came home with 20 bottles of wine, guys. I don't know if that was just the crowd we were with, if it was the fact that we were at a brewery, or if maybe in the summer, beer is just more favorable. So the way that we served our alcohol at our wedding was basically an open bar. So another tip of advice, if you want a low budget wedding, is to keep it casual and make it personal. So keep it casual. We decided on a field wedding and Chipotle for catering, and it was amazing. And Chipotle always makes us happy every time we eat it, so it was perfect. And also, it's a fan favorite. Who doesn't love Chipotle? It was someone, they mentioned Chipotle, and then, or maybe Alec, I can't remember. I really can't remember, so I might be butchering the story, but someone mentioned Chipotle, and Alec loves Chipotle, and I was like, oh my gosh. That's such a fun, personal idea. It's pretty much inevitable that no matter what, no matter how many people you have at your wedding, you're always gonna have extra food afterwards. The way that my mom and I did it was basically if we expected 120 people who accepted their invitation to come, then buying enough food for 100 people would be good. But she said 110, so taking I think 5% off, is that how much? I don't think that's right. 10%. 12%? Whatever. Assuming 10 people wouldn't come, which actually I think about 10 people didn't come. That said they were. We got the triple option for the Chipotle catering and we ended up spending, including tax, $1,353, which equated to about $12.50 per plate. This is kind of tying into the decor side, but I wanted to really add personal touches to our wedding. So what I did, I had a little vintage seating lounge set up in the reception area. There really wasn't a reception area. It was just one big field. <laughs> I loved it so much. It was perfect. I don't think there's anything that could have explained me more than having that at my wedding. And um, Alec loved it too. It was a perfect place for the guests to take pictures and for also the party to take pictures together. So I loved having that. And that turned out to be $440 for the lounge rentals. And then going into the chairs and the tablecloths, we just did white tablecloths and black painted wooden chairs. I loved that it gave it more of a modern vintage vibe. And the chairs and the tablecloths for 120 people ended up being $750, which is kind of pricey. So because I ended up not paying anything for the venue, a lot of times wedding venues include the chairs and the tables that you're gonna be using. So I guess that would be the offset cost. And lastly, we were able to get tables from the owner of the brewery whose friend owns, I guess, a rental company but takes donations. So we just donated 100 bucks to that to get about 16 eight-foot tables. And so that total for the lounge, the chairs, and the tables came out to be $1,293. And then we last minute wanted a DJ, which sounds weird, but initially we were going to have 
one of Alex's friends who was just going to kind of MC and be in charge of the playlist for the ceremony and the reception. Then plans changed and he actually became one of Alex's groomsmen, which was amazing and awesome. So we asked one of our friends who is a wedding DJ on the side and he gave us a pretty great deal, which we are also very grateful for because we kind of had to take that out of other pieces from the budget to make a budget. So the DJ was $400 and I forgot, one of the first purchases that we made for the wedding was a vintage Persian rug, which I knew I wanted to get married on. And we found that on rugsusa.com, I believe, for $269. One thing I also wanted to mention that isn't part of the budget, because we were out in a field, there was no dance floor out there and it would mean that we'd either have to rent one or build one. And I got with my friend, Jason, who is a builder. He does a lot of construction work. He offered to actually make one for us. And I think it was about a 16 foot by 16 foot dance floor made out of plywood and two by fours. And it was really sweet. I, I mean, I, this is what I'm saying guys, is like every part of the wedding was so personal and so well thought out and I can't believe that it all came together so well. One thing that definitely wasn't a priority for me was the cake. I thought it would be cool to have a cake, but I also didn't want to spend like 150 plus dollars on a cake that I'm not really even a cake person anyway. And I don't think Alec is either. The only reason why I would have wanted one was to be able to cut the cake and have that part of the wedding reception. And so we initially weren't gonna have a cake. We were just gonna do a dessert table or I bought a bunch of cake supplies and attempted to make a cake and that didn't work out either because I'm just, I would have needed months in advance to practice and perfect it and that wasn't gonna happen. But then we went to our friend Karen's graduation party and she had the uh, fruit chantilly cake from Whole Foods and it was just this simple one tier round cake and it was just so simple and so like elegant and I was like, man, that cake looks expensive. And she said it was only 35 bucks. So I was like, oh my gosh, no way. So I went on the Whole Foods website, ordered it, but I actually got the smaller version and found that the smaller version is actually in a rectangle shape when I wanted the round. And so she basically had to repurchase a new cake and we ended up paying for two cakes, which it only equated to $57 for both cakes. And it was delicious and definitely around the amount that I wanted to spend for a cake if we were gonna get one. So that worked out really well and the way I decorated it was simply just um, asking them not to put any fruit on it and having it just white and simple. And then I bought these mini letter sparkler candles that had our initials on it. It said, I think it was just like M ampersand AG. I have an amazing friend who is Karen's husband. His name is Pierce and he actually ran around for me uh, the morning of the wedding and picked up a bunch of last minute stuff that I forgot. And I mean, it, I th there was so much stuff. I, I ended up icing Alec whenever he went to reach for the garter in my dress, for the garter toss. I um, asked Pierce to pick up some Smirnoff ices so I could ice him. I don't know what else, some sparklers for the end of the night, which we didn't really end up using anyway because my friend actually gave me extras from her wedding. And that's another tip actually. If you're buying sparklers for the send off, I would suggest to only purchase half of what you think you're going to purchase because you'll be surprised how many people leave early and actually don't make it to the send off. So you'll have a bunch of extra stuff. I think we only used around 30 sparklers, which is what she gave me. So, and then some miscellaneous stuff. I bought some flower crowns for my flower girls. That was $32. And my wedding sign was $34. And then, uh, the invites, the stamps, and the envelopes came out to be $121. Hopefully I did the math right. If not, then it's somewhere around this range. But the total amount that I spent specifically on the wedding, and this didn't include the rehearsal dinner or anything outside of it, we spent $8,064 on our wedding. Before all this happened, I wanted to spend five to 7,000, but that definitely wasn't gonna happen with the things that I really wanted and prioritized. So, yeah, I think we did a pretty good job. Um, again, I am really not the best at budgeting or planning things out or keeping track it for that matter. But I really enjoyed wedding planning. Honestly, being engaged was so much fun. Probably one of the most joyful seasons of my life. I'm really grateful for the opportunities that we were given and the people that we met and the people that we connected with throughout this process because if it weren't for them, we would not be able to accomplish any of this with the budget we have. I think if you are anything like me, one of the things that could be super hard, especially when you are juggling so many things at once is asking for help. 
I think it's part of my personality, but just in kind of instilled in me, like in my pride that I need to do everything myself and I need to do everything perfectly. But honestly, one of the best things that was given to me throughout this process and on my wedding day was a helping hand. <laughs> Seeing all of our friends come in clutch was so amazing. And yeah, so if you need a hand, ask for it because people are so willing to help you, especially for your big day. And I think it's just important to not let yourself stress. A lot of the stress that we experience, we just put on ourselves for no reason. <laughs> if you are a current future bride, you've probably heard it already, but it is super important is to continue to just have fun. And you don't want to remember yourself just stressing out and being bridezilla. You want to remember yourself being blessed by others and blessing others. And it's something to really take in and cherish. So we invited about 160 people and throughout our engagement, we actually added some people just along the way as we found that certain people couldn't come. We had more open seats. And so with the 172 that we invited all in all, 120 were able to accept their invitation. That 120 that accepted their invitation, about 110 actually came to the wedding. So if you are having trouble with figuring out who you want to invite or not invite to your wedding because uh, for budget purposes, you basically want to ask yourself, would I buy this person dinner? Because that's basically what you're doing. You're buying them a seat and a plate of dinner. Along with my first tip of making sure you have your priorities straight before you start planning is that you also want that prioritization to go towards your guest list to make sure you're not inviting people because you feel bad or because you're afraid that, you're, that it'll be awkward, but like you don't want people there that you don't care to be there or you don't want people there who are going to give you more anxiety or cause more stress on you. To conclude all of this, to give you a little recap, my three biggest pieces of advice would have to be one, set your priorities before you start planning with your spouse and figure out what's most important to you and then put most of your money towards those things. Number two, be careful about your guest list and don't over invite people that you don't care to be there. Invite only the people that matter most to you that you would buy dinner for. <laughs> And then number three is to keep it casual and make it personal. If you don't wanna have formal invitations, don't have them. We used a Facebook event for our save the dates and whoever said they couldn't come to the wedding at that point, we ended up not giving them an invite because we knew they couldn't come and the date didn't change. The more casual and personal that you can make your wedding, the less it's going to be on the bank and it'll make it that much more fun and unique. All right, well that wraps it up. I hope you guys found something helpful in this video. And if you did, I'm gonna ask you again, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I will be coming up with more wedding, honeymoon, relationship-based videos. Hopefully that's stuff that you guys like. I've taken a little break on plant videos as you can tell, but I am not done with plants whatsoever. I still have my plant babies right over here. Still happy. Right now it's raining. It's been raining almost every day here in Austin and it's really sad because when it rains, I don't get very good lighting in here and so I have to use my grow light. Anyway, hopefully I'll see you guys on my next video and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks.